Alright, I guess NT equals no T for me is finally dead. Because she's finally here in this idea NT after Final Fantasy VII Remake kicked off the hype train really hard. And it seemed like this idea development team actually got the memo this time and followed the hype train. But seriously though, the June is like the month of Tiba, man, holy crap. Anyway, they show a lot of moves in this podcast, so I'm gonna break her down like how she break her slot machine. There's other stuff in the stream aside from Tifa 2, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, before I go into how she moves, let's talk about one of her parts that doesn't actually move. There was a whole stupid controversy about Final Fantasy VII Remake Tifa, with her new clothes and slightly different body shape and all. And you know, the people who get pissy about it is pretty damn stupid and whatever. The design for this idea Tifa is based off the original, but she still have a pretty similar body shape as a remake one. Hell, she doesn't even have a jiggle physique here like Duodecim. And this is the arcade and NT is made by Team Ninja. The people who make Dead or Alive doesn't put a tickle physic here, but Square Enix alone did it. What kind of a solo world are we living here right now? Anyway, off topic. Tifa is in Assassin class, which is appropriate for a monk like her. Tifa's mechanic is called Fever Time. Similar to Garden and Artemisia, Tifa can get a unique buff after landing a certain number of attacks, which can also go up to two levels. Now there's two different compared to Garden and Artemisia though. The first is that the Fever Time requires a consecutive successful hit, so if you miss the attack, it's gonna be harder for you to get a buff. The second difference is, instead of powering up the moves, she get a new move instead. Without any buff, she only have 6 moves with no dash attack. With level 1 buff, she got 2 new dash attack. And with level 2, she got 4 more dash attack. Which means she can have a total of 12 attack. 6 on the ground, 6 in midair, and 6 dash attack. She just get the hell out of here. Her attack damage remains the same for every buff, but the pure amount of options she have when you do well with her can make her extremely difficult to deal with for her opponent. Anyway, so for the actual moveset, most of them are taking straight from the original game and Duodecim. A 5 hit combo beat rush, a 3 hit combo moonsault kick, a water kick as a mid range attack, and the second hit is a mid range projectile, a somersault as a quick anti air, rising and diving roving race to cover the vertical, which also knock the enemy the opposite way. With Fever Time 1, we got Blizzard Spike for quick mid range poke and Blizzard Ball, a multi-hit projectile that can potentially be used as a combo projectile. For Fever Time 2, we got Meteor Strike for gap closer and knock enemy backward, Heat Crush, a dodge jumping followed by counter attack, and lastly, Burning Arrow, a combo starter for additional damage. Seriously, she has so many moves, every character gonna be jealous. And I'm not even touched on HP attack yet. We got Dolphin Blow with actual Dolphin, a vertical AoE attack similar to Squall Rub Divide, Meteor Drive, a 2 hit combo followed by Dunking Attack, Fiery Fist, a mid range projectile that can change direction with left analog. And last but definitely not least, Meteor Crusher, aka Jojo 7 Page Muda Muda, recreate in animated form for the second time. And finally, let's talk about her EX skill, a freaking limit break slot machine. You can hold a triangle to start the slot machine, and you pull the lever with left analog. After you're done, your whole team will get the attack, defense, and speed buff. And the potency of that buff will scale depending on how good you're playing the slot machine. Additionally, the higher fever time buff you have, the longer the slot machine will be, which means you can also get more powerful buff. And also remember that you're playing this in real time. Don't take too long doing it or someone else gonna interrupt you and you and your team not gonna get a single buff. So yeah, go to your nearest casino and train this crap. And that's it for Tifa moveset breakdown. Aside from that, we got some alternate color here, alternate costume here, and alternate weapon here. She will be available on Arcade this Thursday, and on NT on July 3rd. Yep, Wednesday next week. You don't have to wait for a month for this one. And that's about it here. All the stuff in the broadcast will be talked about in the next video. And after Tifa release on the Arcade, I will be starting making a full moveset video then. So until then, see you next time.